All right, well, let's talk about brushes. Um, I'm gonna talk to you uh, about some of the different types of brushes, uh, also some of the different uh, uses or uh, paint applications that are involved with these different brushes, and then uh, also some of the sizings, and uh, finally some brush care uh, tips. So first off are the different types, and first at the top we have some flats, and it's my biggest brush. Uh, flats are often used for initial washes or wetting the paper uh, before you paint wet into wet. So it's important that you have a big flat uh, when you're uh, wanting to wet your paper. A large size brush will help you cover the whole paper really quickly and evenly. Uh, so when you go to your wet into wet, uh, you, you've got a consistently wet paper. Uh, I also use a smaller flat oftentimes because it does have this, uh, of course, like chiseled edge, and that can be good for architecture or more harder edges like rocks and things that you want to paint. Um, and uh, also, uh, this can function as a, a, a brush to wet your paper on a very small uh, painting, maybe a, you know five by seven inch painting, or you know that can do the trick too. Uh, uh, next, uh, in the middle here are the rounds, and rounds are probably the most commonly used brush type for watercolor. Uh, if you get a good round, you can get a nice point on it, and that can be used for detail work. Uh, also, rounds are, are good for sort of uh, expressive uh, brush work and, and foliage or mountains or things like that. That uh, It's just an all-around brush, so you'll find most watercolorists will be using the round the majority of the time. Uh, and then uh, down here at the bottom I have a mop, and mops are, are really big fat brushes. Uh, they're intended to hold a tremendous amount of water and uh, paint and let you do uh, really large areas. They're really good for wet into wet techniques that are expressive. They're, they're also good for wetting the paper, so this kind of mop would, would do well to wet my paper as well. Uh, I don't use it that often, but I do occasionally when I work uh, very large uh, watercolor paintings, I use my mop. Um, next, uh, we'll talk about the different hairs. So it's probably the most important uh, part of the brush. And I'm going to go in sort of descending order of the different kind of brush hair types. And uh, first we'll start with the natural hair. And uh, I am a kind of painter that prefers natural hair brushes and as opposed to synthetic brushes. And it uh, doesn't mean that synthetics are bad. There's a lot of good synthetic brushes out there. But uh, natural hair, uh, basically all natural hair is going to hold more water than a synthetic brush will. I mean, you can just imagine, you know, uh, you know plastic doesn't hold water. <laughs> Uh, not very well, at least. Um, but uh, hair, you know, does, you know, hold on to that water really well and, and stay wet. So the, the finest hair that you can buy, the best quality brush would be a Kalinsky Sable brush. Um, and a lot of companies make a, a Kalinsky Sable. Uh, the one I have here is a, a Windsor Newton Series 7 brush. And um, why Kalinsky Sable is so prized is because, for one, the, the, the hairs, it's the nature of the hair, the structure. And so uh, sable hair has a, a more porous kind of structure, and so that all those pores hold a lot of water. Uh, and that is a really important thing when you're painting. So when you load your brush, it's got much more water and paint in it. It allows you to paint for a longer time before you have to reload your brush and go back to your painting. Uh, so that saves you uh, some time. It also, uh, the hairs are sort of prized because of their snap. They, they tend to snap back to their original shape quite easily. So when I'm painting, uh, I go back and I uh, get my brush wet so you can kind of see if I, if I kind of pull it like that and snaps back to its shape and keeps its point pretty well. Uh, so those reasons are, are why uh, the high quality brushes are made of Kalinsky Sable. 
Uh, you will pay, <laughs> of course, you have to pay for quality. And uh, a brush like this, and this size, this is a size uh, seven brush. And uh, this would be about $100. Um, you can buy this same size brush with Kalinsky Sable from other companies too. Uh, I like Winsor & Newton. I'm sort of partial to that company. I've used many of their products, so I, I'm just kind of a Winsor & Newton person. But um, uh, maybe it's because they're one of the oldest companies and they're traditionally a watercolor company. So, But anyway... Uh, if you bought a Kalinsky Sable uh, from like Escoda or the Dick Blick series or Princeton, those ones are going to be, you know, maybe 60% of the cost or 70% of the cost. Um, uh, you can get a much cheaper, uh, high quality brush from other companies. But what sort of also prized about these Series 7 brushes is that they're all handmade. Uh, so that's what, what you're paying for. Uh, the, the hairs are hand picked and hand set. So hair, you know, all has this kind of natural bend to it. Uh, and they, they make sure that all the hairs bend to the center and make a point. And then the hairs are hand tied, uh, with string in here and then hand set into the ferrule. And so you're paying for, of course, handmade, uh, craftsmanship. Uh, and these are really, uh, really super brushes. So uh, the other sable brushes that you can get from other companies are not usually handmade, and that's why you're saving money uh, on those. Um, next down, you have basic sable. Uh, Kalinsky sable is the higher quality, and then there's red sable or basically just sable. And I don't have any here. Um, but, uh, I have in the past used them and they're, they're certainly fine brushes. Um, regular Sable is just slightly cheaper than Kalinsky Sable. So you could save some money there. Uh, going on down, we have squirrel hair. Squirrel is a very commonly used hair for watercolor brushes. Um, I have a couple brushes that are squirrel. This round here, which is a number 14 round. Uh, and this is made by Barbara, which I believe is a Japanese company. It says uh, Sri Lanka here, but it's, it's I think it's actually a Japanese company. Um, this is a Series 70R, number uh, 14. It's a really big round. And, and why I, I have a squirrel hair is because squirrel is a lot cheaper. Uh, if I bought a round in Kalinsky Sable at that size, I'm looking at a, about $300. So that's just out of my price range. <laughs> uh, and I don't have any use for a, a, really, when I have this large a brush, I'm usually not painting any detail. I don't need a fine point. Uh, I'm really uh, filling in larger areas or doing more expressive brush work. Squirrel is soft. It doesn't maintain its shape. Once it gets wet, and I'll wet this brush for you, and you can see it does have uh, a little bit of a point to it. Uh, not much, but uh, it doesn't maintain it. Once it's wet, it's going to be so soft, and it, it's not going to, you can see it's already sort of, you know, separating a little bit, and it just doesn't hold the shape that a sable brush will. But it does hold quite a bit of water, and if you're painting areas like clouds and things, these are really good because they don't have a point, and you're not going to get any sharp points in your, your brushwork. Uh, and uh, uh, I like a, a squirrel brush, actually, for, for that purpose of, like, clouds and things. Um, the, the mops are often made of squirrel, too, so you usually see it labeled even as squirrel mop. Um, and so squirrel hair is really soft, like I said, with this one, uh, cheaper, and you can, it, it's still a little bit expensive, though, as far as the hairs go. I'm just saying it's cheaper than the Kalinsky, but um, these mops are great for big expressive areas. These are also good for wetting your paper. It can wet the whole paper really quickly. There's so much water in here. Um, the, uh, this is a number six, and so the sizings here are different than what you would size for a regular round. So this round brush here is a number six, or sorry, number seven, 
and then this is a number six. So that's a huge, uh, vastly different in the sizings. Uh, so when you go to buy a mop brush, make sure you check, uh, you know, the actual size. It's best to go into the store to buy these brushes uh, anyway, because so you can see the actual sizes of them. You know, even though they tell you, you know, how many you know, millimeters or, or uh, it's just really hard to, to gauge it. At least for me, it is hard to gauge the size. Uh, um, anyway, Squirrel, uh, this brush here, the, the price for this was, was about $80. Um, but you could, there's a load of hair here. I mean, it's, that's, you know, you are paying for, for the hair basically. Um, and uh, they're cheaper than Kalinsky, but you got a lot more of the hair. So usually blue squirrel, that's what this is made of. Blue squirrel is the higher quality squirrel. And um, uh, I really like it. Uh, this is just the basic squirrel hair for this brush. Uh, and it's uh, blue squirrel is a little bit softer than the regular squirrel. Uh, then we go down to ox hair. And ox hair, uh, this flat brush is made of ox hair. And as I mentioned before about synthetics, when I go to larger and larger brushes, I, I go to cheaper hair quality. And Ox is at the low end of cost for watercolor brushes. Um, Ox hair has some good characteristics though. Uh, the good points has a good snap to it. Um, it has, uh, retains its shape well, and it lasts well over time. Uh, the, the downside is that the hairs sometimes will stray and not keep their shape over years. Uh, so you're going to get, occasionally I have to cut off a, a hair here because it, it went astray or it lost its shape. So it doesn't really hold up great over a long time. Uh, my brush is damaged. I'll talk about that in a minute, what happened to that. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, ox hair does hold a lot of water. And it, it will really function well in a larger brush. Uh, like, you know, when this brush, I can't remember. This was the first brush I bought, so I don't remember the price. This is a Winsor Newton ox hair. I, I don't know the series that's worn off from years of painting. <laughs> and I don't think they make this anymore, but uh, I think it was a series 623, I wanna say, but I don't remember. Uh, I bought this in uh, about 1984, so <laughs> there you go, uh, uh, revealing my age too. So uh, anyway, it's been a great brush. I still use it, and uh, 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 I like uh, the, the function of ox hair too uh, for flat washes, and it functions well for big areas. Uh, there is also goat hair. I don't have any goat hair brushes, but that's on the very low, low end of the, the cost range and also performance range. Goat's not porous. It's not so, It's a little harder uh, brush bristle. And uh, oftentimes you'll find like an ox goat blend or you'll find other blends too uh, to make the brushes more economical. So you can buy a, a Kalinsky Sable uh, blend with synthetic and that can save you money and some of those brushes perform quite well uh, you can get uh, a number of different blends and, and those can do well but they just basically bridge the gap between performance levels uh, so uh, the uh, the sizings of the brush as I mentioned are, are, are really a wide range and and that really comes down to what size you're gonna paint so I have a very large flat brush here because I, I oftentimes do uh, a half sheet or full sheet watercolor paper. So I'm, I'm oftentimes working in like, uh, you know, 22 by 15 inches or 22 by 30 inches. So I need a very wide brush. So one and a half inch flat's good. If I was working like this brush mat size, this flat's perfectly fine for wetting the paper and doing a lot of any flat work I need to do. Uh, same goes for the rounds. You know, you don't need this large of a round if you're working on a you know 10 by 14 uh, sheet of paper. This is going to be a bigger brush than you need because it's going to you're going to have smaller areas to cover, and and this is going to get clumsy and, and working smaller areas. And so I would go to 
This brush I use on uh, a painting that's uh, this brush mat size or even up to, a, a, you know, like I said, a, almost a half sheet. I'll keep using this size brush for a lot of my work. Uh, so it really depends on what size you're painting. Also, it depends on what kind of painting you do. If you do a lot of detail work, you're going to want a brush with a nice fine point. If you're more expressive in your painting, this is not necessary. You could use a cheaper quality brush that doesn't have such a sharp point. <clears throat> if you need to save a lot of money, you can buy all synthetic and use all synthetic. Uh, and, and many people are happy just using synthetic. Um, uh, talk a little bit about the, the brush care and uh, you want to make sure that you're, you're taking care of your brushes over the years you have them. You'll have your brushes your whole life if you, uh, if you take care of them. And I'll just mention a little bit about, you know, what happened to this brush. Uh, and I had this brush since I first started taking watercolor classes. So. When I was a high school student, I, I used to take classes from this old guy at an art supply store, and he's a really wonderful guy. He taught me a lot. Uh, and when I bought this brush, I, I wasn't really well informed about how to care for it. Uh, and so what I what I did was what I think a lot of students do. I've seen students do is put my brush into my water cup while I'm not using it. And so what happened was is the water got down into the ferrule here, and then uh, it damaged the wood, and therefore also uh, uh, it, it lost the connection here. The, the glue basically dissolved over time too, and that's what happened to my brush. Um, so you never want to leave your brush in your water cup. The second reason you don't want to do this is that uh, when it's at the bottom of your cup, it's going to bend. And if you leave it there for a couple hours, it will keep that bend and it will be really difficult to ever get your brush back to its original shape. So you want to uh, usually, uh, after I uh, am using my paint, uh, my brushes, I, I lay them flat to dry. And this is a brush mat, so air can get under it. It's not, you know, sitting on a, a solid table. Uh, you don't want to wash your brush and then put it into your cup like that because the same problem will happen. You'll get the water from your bristles will go down in here into the ferrule and then damage the, the glue and the, the wood handle. So you want to avoid that situation. So after you clean your brushes, just lay them flat uh, to dry. Uh, and then cleaning your brush, you want to never use soap. Uh, or any kind of cleaning fluid. There are brush cleaning fluids, and those are not for watercolor brushes. Those are for oil or acrylic brushes. Uh, it's very toxic to the hairs. It will damage them. Soap will damage your hairs too. So if you just think about, you know, you know, if you washed your hair with soap, <laughs> you know, what are the effects? It's going to be really dry and brittle, and the same will happen to your brushes. So you don't want to use any soap. Uh, just use clean water. Uh, after you've cleaned your brush and wet, just reshape it into the point and then just lay it flat and let it dry. And then after it's dry, you can store them in your cup or can or wherever you store your brushes. Um, these little drying mats are, are really like travel cases where they roll up. I can just roll this up and then uh, uh, tie it. Uh, together and then, you know, transport my brushes outside if I want to paint in the field or uh, if I'm, you know, going somewhere. Uh, so those are, these are really cheap. You can buy, this is actually for um, oriental style painting, so that calligraphy. So I have, and I do this too, I do some calligraphy and some uh, oriental style painting and that's where I got this mat, was from a shop that sells these kind of brushes. So you can buy these too on any art supply store if you go to the section where they have oriental painting supplies and you get these mats. Uh, I've got a few of them because I use them for oil and acrylic and watercolor. I have different ones for my different brushes. Uh, then uh, lastly on brush care, uh, you want to be really careful when you buy a new brush. So um, uh, if you buy a new brush, and this is a little cheapy brush that I have, 
but it does have a little plastic uh, sort of protector on here. And when you take that off, you'll find that the brushes are really stiff. Uh, usually brushes have been coated with some gum arabic. Uh, gum arabic is the, the binder uh, medium that's in watercolor paint. And they just put it on there and shape the brush and then store it. Uh, and that's just to keep the, the point and the, the shape of the bristles. So when you buy a new brush, you don't want to bend the bristles right away. You want to put it in water a little bit and then gently massage. After, after about a minute of, of the water sitting, just gently massage it. And you'll feel the kind of sticky gum arabic in there. And then uh, once it gets a little softened up, you can rinse it out again and then you can paint with it. Uh, you don't have to worry about the gum arabic if you paint because it's it's the same uh, uh, material that's in your watercolor paint. That's what's used as a, what we call the the, the binder, uh, what connects the pigment uh, to the uh, make the paint. So it's not bad for your your watercolors. I actually have gum arabic, and I'll I'll demonstrate in another video uh, how you can add gum arabic to paints. Uh, and get some certain effects with it. Uh, so anyway, that's some uh, kind of brush care tips. So when you go out to buy your brushes, you don't need to buy a lot. Uh, all you need to begin with is one flat and one round. That's all you really need. Uh, so I have done so many paintings with just these two brushes. Um, like I said, a, a size like the size of this uh, brush mat, the entire paintings would be done with these two brushes. Um, even a little larger size, I might just use these two brushes. And very rarely, unless I go to a really large sheet of paper, will I move to you know this kind of set where I've got a really large flat for my wetting of the paper. I've got a smaller flat for rocks and, and hard edges like buildings, or uh, and I've got a bigger rounds for larger maybe trees or, or mountain areas and a smaller round for detail and smaller wash areas. So this set here could, you know, these four brushes would, would do you for any size painting from small to large. And, uh, you know, like I said, you don't have to pay a huge amount of money. You could get a, a, a set of this kind of brushes for $100 or less for all. Uh, you're just not going to get this uh, Sable brush in that price range. But if you went with Ox and uh, synthetic blends, you can get all four size brushes for about $100. Well, good luck when you go brush shopping. Uh, that's about all. We'll uh, talk about paper next and uh, the importance of that. See you soon.